I need everyone to stop what they're doing and watch this heartbreaking clip from CNN and digest the realities about the eviction crisis that has been happening and that will continue to happen even after this temporary ban on evictions is lifted uh, by the CDC. Hello, constable, need to come to the door. From one Houston home to the next. Hello, constable. Deputy Benny Gant with the Harris County Constable's Office executes judge's orders to evict. Hello, constable. We ain't got nowhere to go. Israel Rodriguez is the tenant at this apartment, but he's not alone. 20-month-old Israel, his brother, four-year-old Fabian, and their mother are some of the estimated 40 million Americans facing eviction in the downward spiral of the COVID economy. They didn't rush us, but they were like, get everything you need. Rodriguez admits he hasn't been paying rent behind thousands of dollars. It's my fault in the eviction. It was a lot going on during the corner. When it hit, I lost my job. So it took me like a month to get another job. This is my check, but I ain't making it with $300. It's literally $300. Their stroller? now carries their possessions. It's mainly the kids' clothes because me and her just wear the same clothes almost every day. Make sure we got, you know, toilet paper and a little bit of snacks for the kids. What are you going to do with all of your stuff? That's, that's, that's trash. They can throw it in the trash because we don't have a car. We don't have help. We don't have nobody that can come, you know, help us out right now. Nobody. We got ourselves, me and the kids and her, we, that's it. How does you as law enforcement feel about seeing that family have to go? Oh, that's a tough situation. I've got six kids. Six children, and um, you know, when, you know, the kids see the, the, the mom and dad in, in desperate situations. It's tough. That's clear. Deputy Gant, an officer for 35 years, is just starting his day. Eight evictions are on his list. A co-defendant is here. Two of them. At each stop, people behind on rent are ordered to leave. Possessions pulled out. Where are you guys gonna go now? I'm going to go to a hotel. You can go to a hotel. As Deputy Gant works through his list, we get word that 200 eviction orders have come through the Harris County courts for this week. That's double what they normally saw for an entire month before COVID. 200 on Monday. What does that... Well, that's a lot, yeah. What does that say to you? Well, what that means is, is that uh, they're ready to start having people removed from properties. It is a backlog. But it's also just one precinct in one of America's hardest hit cities in evictions. The job takes its toll. I don't really want to put her out here, but I have to under this judge's order. At this apartment, the tenant is an elderly woman who can no longer afford the rent. <laughs> the landlord's mover, Francisco Munoz, works, though he doesn't want to. I have a family, I have a sister, I have a, you know, my mom. And we never know. Maybe today is her, tomorrow is me, you know. Mm. Maybe today is her, maybe tomorrow is me. This report came out Tuesday, September 2nd, 2020, the same day that the CDC issued a moratorium on evictions for the rest of the year as we grapple with the pandemic. However, what the eviction moratorium does not do, it does not address what is going to happen in January. All we have done is kicked the football down the field. We've punted the problem down the field because in January, every individual who was facing eviction will still be responsible for paying the full amount for this entire period between now and January. And here's the problem. The problem is, is that if they don't have the money now and if they don't have jobs now, how are they going to pay that even in January? And here's the bigger issue. America has taken care of businesses and corporations and, and billionaires and millionaires. They've taken care of them by giving them forgivable loans by the Fed issuing trillions of dollars to shore up the stock markets. So money has been given out to take care of the situation for millionaires and billionaires. But only twelve hundred dollars has been given to the American people. We've taken care of Wall Street and we've left your street to struggle for itself. And so if we have the capacity to spend trillions of dollars to solve this problem for Wall Street, why can we not do it for everyone else? And that's because our politicians do not serve us. They serve Wall Street.
The absolute best solution for this is for the government to issue checks to every single household so that they can take care of their bills, so that they can have a roof over their heads, so that they can continue to consume at a level that would help the economy to still sustain itself. But instead of giving money to the people, the government has given money to corporations, millionaires and billionaires. And we are out here fighting for ourselves. And so while the CDC has issued a temporary moratorium, moratorium on evictions, which helps everyone between now and January, it does not fix the problem because in January, everyone who needed an eviction moratorium will be responsible for paying the full amount. So how can we expect them to pay five months of rent in January when they can't pay one month of rent right now and there are no jobs for them to get? The only way we solve this eviction crisis is by the government doing their job for the people the same way they did their job for Wall Street.